I'm immune to the pain And I'm so used to the rain Now I put my head to the sky The sky, the sky Don't give a damn what you say to me I have my guest with me to my right Ciao, say hi Hi Charles, would you mind introducing the topic? Uh, today we're going to discuss anabolic steroids and what they do and do not do and try to dispel some of the myths that are out there that the public has a misconception about. Oh, okay. Well, first off, I would like to say that you look fabulous. Well, thank you. Same to you. Okay. And I thank you for coming to join the show. I'm glad I could be here. Thanks. Okay. So briefly tell me a little bit about you. Uh, well, for 25 years, I was a law enforcement officer, uh -huh. retired as a homicide detective in a department outside Buffalo, New York, and I currently work in personal protection work, and, and I do private investigations. And for about the last 40 years, I've been a very avid weight trainer and live in the bodybuilding lifestyle. Okay. So, um, AAS is a man's hormone that is therapeutically in medicine to stimulate the growth in appetite. Am I correct? Yes, to a certain degree. Um, anabolic androgenic steroids um, are, have many different uses. Okay. Um, they are used, it, what they are is, it's a synthetic derivative of the male hormone testosterone, uh, which men naturally produce in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And this is the counterpart to the women's estrogen. Okay. And uh, a lot of doctors are very leery about prescribing testosterone to males but they will freely give estrogen to females with no problem. Um, yes, they are used to stimulate growth uh, for muscle building, and they'll also stimulate appetite. This okay. is especially good for people that have uh, problems with uh, muscle wasting disease. Mm. Uh, older people, uh, can a lot of times they can't get enough protein in their diets because they just don't have an appetite. So if they're given anabolic steroids, certain ones that will help stimulate their appetite and also help them gain some of their strength back. Gotcha, gotcha. So are you taking these steroids? Do you consume this? Yes, I do. I've uh, been using the anabolic steroids for about 10 years now under, I must say, under a doctor's supervision. Mm -hmm. I have my blood checked twice a year. Um, a big misconception that people have about anabolic steroids is you turn into this crazy freaky monster um, overnight by injecting Hulk steroids. Hulk Hogan, not Hulk Hogan, <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Um, the, credit, the incredible Hulk. You know. Yeah, um, there was a big myth out there that, you know, about Roy rage and everything. What this really breaks down to, if you're a jerk before you take anabolic steroids, you're going to be a little bit of a bigger jerk on steroids. And They've done a lot of studies. Um, Dr. Harrison Pope from Harvard Medical School uh -huh. has done studies with males using 600 milligrams of testosterone a week, which is a huge amount of testosterone to be wow. taking. Uh, in super physiological levels, uh, it would probably boost a man's testosterone levels up over the 1500 milligram uh, per deciliter level. And normal goes from 250 on the low end up to 850, so you can see where this is almost double, and they did not perceive any um, personality um, disorder traits in any of the people that they tested using mm -hmm. this. Um, the general public is really misinformed um, about steroids. First of all, it, it's not going to make you a super athlete overnight. It's not going to give you skills that you are not born with. So a football player that takes steroids, he's going to get a little more muscular, he might get a little quicker, but he's not going to make the NFL if he doesn't have the right <laughs> talent there. Uh, you're not going to shoot uh, 50 points a game in basketball um, because you take anabolic steroids. Right. You have to have the hand-eye coordination. Um, it also helps uh, tremendously with uh, recovery levels in athletes. Whereas, uh, say a football player pulls a hamstring, he uses anabolic steroids, his recovery time goes from six He's weeks down to three weeks right. because um, the muscle recovers that much faster. Um, another thing that bodybuilders suffer from is 
delayed onset muscle soreness. Mm -hmm. And when they take steroids, the muscle recovers much quicker and you don't get a lot of that soreness, you know, the feeling mm -hmm. when you work out. And I, I know you've, you've worked out, so <laughs> you crawl out of bed the next morning, you feel like a freight train hit you. You, you don't have that feeling when you, when you take the steroids. Okay. Um, steroids began being researched back in the 1950s and 60s, and they were used for uh, wow. a whole host of different uh, physical <laughs> ailments and people that most people don't know about. And this ranges from um, protein deficiencies in geriatrics, mm -hmm. which I talked about before. A disease of the skeleton, like osteoporosis, um, muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. um, and they stopped some of the research with that only because some of these steroids had an androgenic effect, uh, which are not desirable in young kids, right. uh, especially females. But now they have other ones out, like uh, Anabar, which is a uh, is not androgenic, mm -hmm. so it won't develop the uh, characteristics that are undesirable. Um, steroids have been blamed for liver disease, yeah, kidney and liver disease, mm -hmm. but yet uh, anabolic steroids have been used to treat kidney and liver disease. Also, uh, cancer, including postmenopausal women um, with breast cancer, AIDS, which is a type of muscle wasting disease, and so also. It's very no, to cure these. Not necessarily cure them, the but, but to treat the problem, right. Okay. Right. So bringing back to the NFL, so when you say that when they're injured, most of the time they use um, a steroid to, to strengthen them back up for the game. Well, if, right. a doctor, if a doctor prescribes that, then they would be given an injection or a series of injections to help them recover. Um, I also want to preface that everything I take is under doctor supervision okay. and I obtain everything legally through legal means. Most people think that anabolic steroids are all illegal. They're, yes, they are a class three drug right up there with uh, heroin and cocaine as far as the DEA is concerned, but the DEA and the AMA were both against Congress making laws against uh, steroid possession. Okay. Back in the day, this was back in like in the 80s, early 90s. Um, but you can get them legally if your doctor prescribes them for you, and also uh, through anti-aging clinics that have doctors, and you have to send in lab work and everything to make sure you're a candidate to be able to use these type mm. of drugs. Wow. Wow. Okay, so when you... Okay. <coughs> so when you, um, when you take yours, your dosage. Right. So is, first of all, is all the dosage given through the syringe or is it half like maybe orally? Well, there's, a, orally? there's oral steroids which you have to go through the liver first. The liver first? The liver, they're processed by the liver first. And they tend to be a little more toxic, a little harder on the system than the injectables. Mm -hmm. um, I only use the injectables only because they're uh, less hard on the body and they produce the desired effects uh, a little bit better. Um, all the injectables and even with all the orals, they all kind of do a different little thing. Uh, some will make you retain a lot of water. Um, you ladies should know about retaining water at certain times, but um, you know, that's not a desirable thing. So a guy comes off, say like Dianabol, which is an oral steroid, they'll make them retain a lot of water. Right. Uh, it's also very toxic to the liver. That's why I don't use it. Right. Uh, I'm too old to play around with things like that. When you say old, because you don't look. <laughs> what, do you mind me asking how old are you? I'm 60 years old. And hmm. you go viewers, uh, you can have a body like this when you're 60. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. but, but like I said, um, when I do take these drugs, it's not an intravenous injection. So okay. you're not injecting anything into In the vein, like a okay. heroin addict or right. anything. It's all intramuscular. Um, and depending on what you're taking depends on how many times during the week that you may have to inject yourself. There, there are cycles that I've used where I've injected myself once a week, and there are times when I've had to inject myself up to seven times a week, depending on 
the drug because certain drugs they have a shorter half-life, which means it breaks down the system mm -hmm. that much quicker. So you have to use a little more frequently. Right. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the way the drug works. Right, right, right. So when you take yours, um, do you go directly, like, straight to the gym and work out? <laughs> um, well, it depends. You know, sometimes I'll I'll take my dosage before I go to the gym, or sometimes I'll take it after. It's not. Do we give it a super effect when you go to the gym? Like no, there, there there's like no bang. You know, uh, it, it hits you like a Mack truck like you when you like inject muscle. it. Yeah, you don't go <laughs> ripping out of your clothes or anything like that. Um, usually, when you first start a cycle of anabolic steroids, it'll take up to a week, week and a half, two weeks. Uh, for you to notice the difference, the weights will feel a little bit lighter. Right. So you throw a little more weight on, your body starts to change a little bit. Um, so it's not an immediate effect. It's it, it's not like um, you snort a line of cocaine or smoking a joint where you have almost an immediate effect mm -hmm. from that. It, it's not that type of drug okay. to have that kind of effect. So when you say that, you know, it may give you the, you know, that gift to lift. To, to add more pounds to your to your bell. What's the what's the most that you've lift? 